Hi there, and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host for this episode, Hezekiah Allen, with the City of Cottonwood's Parks Recreation Department. And today we have uh, Trevor Faust, also with the Parks Recreation Department. He's our fitness or our aquatics and fitness coordinator. Welcome, Trevor. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. So uh, you'll notice there's a little delay. We're doing things uh, some, a little differently today. Uh, so we're having to utilize some technology. So hang in there with us. But today we are talking about health and how the Parks Recreation Department inspires a vibrant community. For most, these days we have more time but limited options, which could be a recipe for going to the fridge a lot. Um, health is more than hitting the gym or eating right, but a mindset grounded by routine and balance. All of us have said at one time or another that I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time to connect with family, uh, to reach out to loved ones, uh, to really spend time, quality time with, with someone, uh, whether it be a, a son or a daughter or your wife. Well, these days we have time, uh, but we also have time in which our minds wander and which is OK. Uh, but today we're going to talk about health, uh, mind, body and spirit. And and uh, we're going to talk to Trevor Faust, uh, who's, who's our resident expert um, on a lot of things health. So, uh, Trevor, can you tell us a little bit about, about your background and what qualifies you uh, to talk health? Aspiring fitness professional is what I prefer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, currently I'm a senior kinesiology student with Concordia University St. Paul, uh, and I've uh, been a uh, fitness enthusiast for a while, and for me personally, I started my uh, professionalism in the fitness field back in 2011 when I got my first certified personal trainer certification, and uh, from there, I it just kind of exploded into a passion, and uh, it, and I explored a lot of, uh, I guess, outlets such as online coaching, and um, and then also recreationally with the fitness floor here at the Cottonwood Recreation Center. I did that for seven years, and um, while I uh, supervised all the group exercise programs that we have here and then um, some of you who might be tuning in might remember our looking good cottonwood program i ran that for several years and uh, every year we had at least a thousand pounds of weight loss uh, collectively between all the participants um, and so i it's just been a real pleasure and an honor to be here uh, serving the community in a health capacity You know, Trevor, I, uh, I've one of always enjoyed stopping by your office and picking your brain and, and asking health questions and, and diet questions and nutrition questions and your wealth of knowledge. And you've dedicated a lot of time to, to obtaining that knowledge. And, and, I, and I know you're always willing to share it uh, to anyone who asks. So I appreciate that and appreciate the work that you do. And one of the things that you've talked about in the past uh, is this idea of mind, body and spirit. Uh, and uh, we feel I feel like that really pertains to where we're at right now as a nation is understanding that thought process. Um, can you explain that to our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. Essentially, what you're describing here is the biopsychosocial model um, uh, in, in its entirety uh, when you talk about mind, body and soul and uh, uh, essentially, uh, the bio stands for like our biology, our mechanical self, um, our biomechanical self. Think of the psycho as the psychology aspect, um, counseling, uh, developmental stages of our lives. The social stands for our support systems the environment to which we find ourselves in, um, uh, our diver social diversity, that, that sort of stuff. Um, that's what the biopsychosocial model is really all about. Nice. So I think what's important to, to understand is that 
everybody has a little anxiety during this time and that's normal and it's natural and it's going to happen. And it's not one of those things that necessarily you've got to find a way to just kind of tuck, tuck away. Uh, but understanding this idea of mind, body, and spirit will allow you to adapt and overcome and understand um, where, where you're at at a certain time. Can, can you explain where the idea of mind, body, and spirit originated from? Yeah, I believe the it was a German American psychologist Eric Erickson who uh, coined the psychosocial model in the developmental stages of our life and um, the kind of cause and effect to kind of what makes us who we are and uh, how we interact in our social environment and uh, as it relates to our mental and physical health. And um, so it, it really kind of ties in the, um, the aspect of not just treating ourselves at our, the, I guess you could say, not just treating ourselves as um, uh, one thing or the other, not like physical or mental, you know, they're intertwined and one affects the other. And so it's a very important that we recognize that and that we identify those anxieties and those depression that, that we feel from, you know, it, it's pretty relevant right now, right? As we're uh, going through this time with each other. So it's important to uh, understand that our mental and physical are closely intertwined. Yeah, that, that is so important. And I think you talk to some folks and they'll say, oh, I work out uh, as a stress relief to get to get my head right. Um, and then other folks are like, I work out to focus on my physique or my body image. Um, but but really, it's both is occurring while you work out and, and being active. And, and it's something that from my understanding, from talking to you, we, that's what we were naturally uh, born to do. Like if you go back uh, in time, you know, we, uh, as human beings, we are very active social individuals and this mind, body, spirit takes that into account. The fact that um, we were meant to be out there uh, running and, and exercising and being active. Um, so and during this time, when it's tough to get out there to socialize, it's important to remember to still be able to find time to exercise, find time to connect, whether that's through a phone um, or, or talking to the person that you live with. Um, so can you give the folks out there some advice based on this, on, on how to continue on and be active and, and do those sorts of things? Oh yeah, I mean there there are many ways to be active um, physically and mentally to to stay engaged and stay healthy. Uh, I mean just as an example, on our uh, on the Conwood Parks and Recreation Department Facebook page, we are engaging the community through live uh, Facebook classes, uh, live group exercise classes. Excuse me. And um, that just, that, that's just one example that you could use um, to stay socially engaged with each other uh, to help with that, your mental uh, health. Uh, but it also allows us to uh, release a little bit. We can get on there and comment um, and uh, express how we are feeling. Uh, it just happens that today is Thoughtful Thursday. Uh, we can share um, our kindness that we've experienced from other people and then pay it forward. Uh, that Those are all excellent strategies to improve our mental well-being. And inversely, it will impact our physical uh, health because when we're happy and we're releasing those endorphins, uh, we're more apt to getting outside and being physically active and uh, there, there's a symbiotic relationship there between our mental and physical health. Yeah, totally, totally. It's so interesting. Um, so my son recently had a, had a birthday. And, and of course, there are those challenges of 
um, he can't have like people over for his birthday. So we, we did this whole um, like meeting process where everybody had their cell phones and were plugged in and there was like 30 people on their phones. And afterwards, my wife and I were talking and uh, we were both like, how nice was it to talk to everybody and to laugh and have a good time? Like, I, like her and I both didn't realize how much we needed that. And I think it's, it's something to where you can get into um, the day to day, minute to minute process of this and, and forget that the, to forget the chance or, or, or the, the time to take to reach out through whatever method that you, that you have. And, and so how important is it to have a routine during this, these times? It's, I mean, it is vital to have routine during these times. We, you know, my, my boss, Jack Teal was talking about how he was, uh, you know, he's working from home and, um, and he, still got up, got dressed uh, in his work clothes so that, you know, he could set his mind, set that environment for uh, himself to be proactive throughout the day. And I found that really interesting uh, based on what I've learned uh, through health psychology, that setting or setting those stages and having that routine, having that behavior that reflects our goals is is vital to our personal success and our health, our well-being. Mm -hmm. So true, so true. So one of the questions that that we get a lot is, um, how do I stay healthy and active during this time? You know, I'm used to going to the gym every day, or I'm a competitive athlete. Um, how how can I get that 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 same type of of workout um, in my home or, or out and about? And and do you have any advice for our viewers on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, have some ingenuity. No, no, um, it'll be, it will be serious, but, uh, to be honest, it, it really comes down to, I mean, we're, we have our own body weight that we can utilize to really get a great, uh, workout. There's all sorts of, uh, information online that you can find. You can join our group live group exercise classes on our Facebook page to keep your, you know, your cardiovascular health in check and uh, get outside. I mean, me personally, I, I run my dogs every morning uh, for at least 30 minutes. And in the evening, my wife and I go out for a long walk with the dogs. Um, you know, we have a great opportunity here in Arizona where we can still go outside and, and enjoy uh, our, the beauty of the high desert in Arizona and uh, take it all in, you know, release those endorphins by getting outside is, is really important right. during times like these. And um, I mean, other ideas would be to, you know, get creative. I, I've seen a lot of creativity online if uh, you're struggling with coming up with concepts of your own, but, you know, um, grab a milk jug, fill it up with water and uh, go, do some kettlebell swings and, you know, have fun with it. It's a great time to um, get creative and try new things that you, that mm -hmm. you might not have tried before. There are other forms of athleticism out there. Plyometrics is a great, our, is a great training modality to improve our athleticism. So um, there, there's a plethora of information out there um, that uh, is right at your fingertips. So, uh, I definitely recommend using it. Sounds good, Trev. Well, we're going to take a, a short break and we'll be back to you to talk more about health uh, with our friend and an asset, uh, Trevor Faust, the aquatics and fitness coordinator for the city of Cottonwood. We'll be back shortly. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride. 
There are people who struggle with addiction and homelessness. Sometimes it may feel like there is nothing we can do to help. But there is. You can make a tax-deductible donation and help those in need transition away from homelessness. When you give someone a handout, you could actually be supporting an addiction. A better life starts with better health, especially for those living in the streets. Support solutions, not addictions. You can make a difference. Visit cottonwoodcares.org. I'm your host, Hezekiah Allen, with the Cottonwood Parks Recreation Department. And with us, we've got Trevor Faust, uh, fitness and or aquatics and fitness coordinator for the city of Cottonwood. We just got done talking about the idea of health and mind, body, and spirit. And we focused first on kind of the body. Uh, but just to circle back a little bit, let's let's talk again about the philosophy of mind, body, spirit. Trev? Yeah, absolutely. So uh Really, the psychosocial model that mind, body, spirit, and how all that's intertwined goes goes back much further than we think. It has philosophy roots, and um, and we all kind of get interested in the story behind um, how these theories come about. And it's it's not something that's really uh, new to us. It's just something that we're starting to practice in the last couple of dec decades in the uh, medical and health field. And as a, as a health practitioner, it's, it's vital for me to uh, understand the uh, psychosocial model and how it relates to humans and our, our health. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we just got done focusing on the body. Uh, now let's talk about the mind. I think the mind is that thing that we see uh, sometimes kind of gets left behind and we don't focus on uh, strengthening our minds and, and preparing our minds. Um, so what does it mean by mind health? Absolutely. Uh, mind, so mind health is, uh, remember, our physical well-being and our mental well-being are intertwined. So um, when we're exercising and when we're experiencing new new things, new levels of stress physically, uh, it it directly it directly interacts with our mental well being, and um, they there are cognitive benefits to being physically active from being. Um, having better balance, to improving our bone density, to improving our cognitive function, how we think and um, how fast we think. All these things are intercorrelated with each other. And so um, mental health is uh, just as important as our physical health, but by being physically active, we are tapping into our mental health. Um, but there are specific strategies that we can incorporate to just work on our mental health, and that's through our social environment, how we are engaging with, the, with one another. And uh, that's a challenge right now, uh, but, but not really. It's, it's about your perspective, how you're looking at, at it, and that is a mental, uh, a mental reframe in your mind that you gotta kind of have to have. So a lot of it comes from being introspective and uh, having that time to develop self-care. And um, self-care can be anything. It could be physical. It could be um, uh, maybe it's um, like taking a yoga class where it's a little bit more meditative and um, you know, not thinking of, of much of anything at all, but how are you feeling right now? How are you feeling in the moment? And, and expressing that, identifying that is important to our own mental health. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. You know, I, it's um, Trevor. So my wife, um, she, a couple of years ago, she started introducing this idea of meditation. And uh, mm. of course, you you know me. So my first uh, reaction to this was really, <laughs> and, 
And but the more that we the more that we did it um, and and meditated, and it's more about sitting and and connecting to your inner self. Um, it was it was really beneficial, um, and it allowed me to uh, open up to think things through and to have a clear mind going forward, um, which was fantastic. And so during this time you know, we talk about our mind and it's so important to do the self evaluation, self help. Um, how do we safeguard this while we're, we're out, we're at home and, uh, we're, we're trying to stay busy. We're trying to keep a routine. We're trying to stay active. Yeah. I mean, we have, you know, right now we have a lot of, uh, you know, athletes, uh, who aren't able to do what they typically do. If that can, you know, disrupt your routine and, and drive you a little crazy. Uh, but it, but it comes down to human creativity. You know, there was a, a guy in, in France, I can't recall his name, but, uh, I was reading that he did a full marathon on his 23 foot long porch, a full marathon, you know, uh, there are, it was something like 3000 laps that he did to complete a full marathon on his, you know, on his deck. And, uh, you know, to me, that's inspiring. You know, we have options. We have the capability. It's, it's about um, t- sitting back and, and looking at those opportunities for what they are. And mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that, that creativity has a lot to do with it and uh, keeping it, safeguarding that mental well-being. So he did a full marathon on his porch at, with 3,000 mm-hmm. laps. Yeah. Is this individual married? Long. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can imagine that dialogue. What are you doing right now? <laughs> I'm running a marathon. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. that's that is truly innovative, though. Um, you know, oh, yeah. one of the I'm, things that we totally one of the things we've talked we've talked about, Trevor, is this idea of fear and how fear can fear of the unknown, fear of what's not what's going to happen. Um, there's, you know, you can plan ahead and be prepared, but when it crosses a threshold to fear, um, that's when it can grab a hold of your mind, um, and take you down roads. You don't want to go down. Um, are there some exercises, some mental exercises that people can do to, to help when this process starts to kick in? Yeah. And to that point, this is why structure and behavior is so important for us. Um, maintaining that day, those day-to-day activities as best we can. And uh, I mean, there are plenty of mental exercises that we can do. Uh, I mean, for, for example, you could, you know, change it up. And if you don't know how to play an instrument, or maybe you, you play one instrument and you've been wanting to learn a new instrument for all these years, but you just, you know, haven't found the time to, to explore it. So, you know, maybe explore different avenues of um, music and uh, learning a different instrument. And that can actually um, be a great mental exercise for anyone um, looking to uh, improve their mental health. And uh, I mean, something as simple as a puzzle can be mentally stimulating. So, I mean, those are, those are great examples um, of probably many that are uh, options that are out there. No, that's, that's such a good, good, good advice, you know, especially when you're looking at, uh, you know, word puzzles and, and learning a, a new skill, learning how to play the guitar or something, maybe, you know, maybe that's something you've always wanted to do. One of the viewers that are out there is to learn how to play the guitar. Well, we've all been given right now the idea of time and what a precious gift to be given um, and to focus on something positive or learning of the guitar or doing something or hanging out with your children. Um, I, I, I listen to the Ted talks quite a bit and sometimes I'll get on these ones listening about the brain and how it develops. And, and uh, there's this thought of, you know, some people during brain injuries are really able to um, come back 
a lot quicker because they'll focus on learning new things and, and, and getting out there and trying new things. Well, that allows the brain to grow and develop. Um, your brain is a muscle just like anything, like, like your bicep or your tricep. And, and the more you use it, the more you get out there, uh, the, the better off it'll be. And, but uh, I am no uh, brain expert by any means, but uh, that's just what I've seen. Um, so uh, Trevor, just going back, mind, body, spirit, uh, the mind and physical, they're connected. Um, and being out there and being, and being physically active will help the mind be able to release endorphins. Am I correct on that? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And uh, let's not forget that nutrition also plays a vital role in our mental health. Uh, when we feed our body those nutrients, it supplies our, uh, us with the capacity to repair our bodies, to get nourishment. And uh, so, so let's not undervalue nutrition. It's super important. And while we have all this time on our hands, it's really easy to consume too much food. So look for those nutrient dense foods, those, those foods that have water in them. Like think about your fruit, your vegetables, the things that are fibrous in nature, that keep you full, that feed your body to, to help support good health, good physical and mental well-being. You know, Trevor, that is so important. And uh, I just had this feeling of guilt come over me uh, because <laughs> I've been diving in the fridge and those Oreo cookies look so good. I'm like, oh, just have another one. It's not a big deal. Uh, but that's so yeah. important is to remember Nutrition is, is important to this whole equation of mind, body, spirit. Um, well, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with you here shortly. And uh, we're going to talk more mind, body, health, mind, body, spirit with Trevor Faust, our aquatics and fitness coordinator for the city of Cottonwood. Thank you, Trevor. This is Bruce Merle, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride! There are people who struggle with addiction and homelessness. Sometimes it may feel like there is nothing we can do to help. But there is. You can make a tax-deductible donation and help those in need transition away from homelessness. When you give someone a handout, you could actually be supporting an addiction. A better life starts with better health, especially for those living in the streets. Support solutions, not addictions. You can make a difference. Visit cottonwoodcares.org. Hi, welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm your host, Hezekiah Allen, with the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cottonwood. And uh, today we've got Trevor Faust, the Aquatics and Fitness Coordinator with the City of Cottonwood, and we're talking health, we're talking mind, body, spirit. And uh, just, to, just to rewind a little bit, now, why are we talking about this? Why is the Parks and Recreation Department talking about this? Well, uh, it's one of those things that we like to advocate for and we like to champion is that community health is rooted in the individuals that live in the community. And by focusing on that population and championing, again, mind, body, spirit, people getting out into nature, people being active, people eating correctly, uh, we're just going to have a better community as a result of it. Um, and so that's why we're focusing on that on this episode and especially during these times. And we're picking Trevor Faust's brain. He's got a wealth of knowledge. Uh, he's done a lot of background in this. He's passionate. And uh, so we've talked about mind. We've talked about the body. Now let's focus on spiritual. What, did, what does it mean by spiritual? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, your kind of, it's talking a little bit about the men, your mental health and um, your conscience a little bit, if you will, um, or if you're spiritually uh, inclined, then, you know, your, your soul and uh, the essence of who we are. Um, and that's kind of what it's talking about there. Um, 
So I, I'd say that one of the things that's super important for our our personal essence, our, our soul, our spirit, whatever you want to identify that as, is to uh, make sure that we are being grateful and uh, to, to for what we have. Uh, that is a surefire way to uh, stay mentally inspired and connected with other people. When we show our gratitude, when we thank people, when we do kindness, um, remember it's Thoughtful Thursday. So when we do things like that, it will really, it, it really fulfills us and uh, helps keep us happy. Um, there's a, the, the four pillars of success are health, wealth, love, and happiness. And so when we have our health, um, we're more inclined to have wealth. And what does wealth stand for? You know, that's, you know, it's just not, it's not just monetary. There are other, other things uh, such as uh, having rich connections with others in our lives. Um, maybe a spouse, maybe uh, a son or a daughter. Um, so, uh, I mean, there are multiple levels to that and trying to explain that the psychosocial model in such a short time period is really challenging to do because it is a complex subject. Um, uh, but we're doing our best here with it. So, <laughs> yeah, you're doing great, Trevor. So, um, this is a, the, hearing this perspective of it is, is for, it's for the first time for me as well. It's not like we kind of ran through and did a practice run before we did this. And so a lot of this I'm hearing for the first time is, is with our viewers. And uh, one of the words that comes out to me is balance, is, is, mm -hmm. is having hope, um, having understanding, being prepared, and try not to go down this negative road um, where you start stacking up negative thoughts like a fence that goes on for miles. Um, because that's when it starts to become overwhelming. Um, that's when we start backing away from our routine. Uh, we start just kind of melding into the couch a little bit. We start making more trips to the fridge. Uh, so then our nutrition is off. We're not as active anymore because you know what? There's another great movie on. Let's just hang out and watch this other movie. And it seems like that's how we get going down this road of uh, th that we don't want to go down. Am, am I off there, Trev? No, no, balance is, is super important. If you ask me uh, on an off uh, chance whenever you come by the office, you know, like what should I incorporate here in, in my own health lifestyle or to have a better healthful experience? And it would be balance. Balance is the key. Um, you know, even in our nutritional practices, people, those who practice balance, and, ha and think about foods differently, not necessarily as a bad food or a good food, but looking at as sustenance and kind of like on a, on a um, RPM scale, you know, like this food has more nutrient dense foods and this food has less nutrient dense foods. And we want a little balance between all of those, um, eating variety of foods, a variety of colorful foods is important. And uh, so I don't want to get off too much on a tangent here, but uh, those are all very important and vital uh, steps to take. Um, balance is key. Yeah, you know, so true. And uh, f f also, from what I understand, uh, being able to teach someone uh, a new skill or, or, or be able to make that connection um, can, can help during this, this, this time. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, teaching others is a great way to learn ourselves and, uh, it, it improves relationships. And, uh, so even with the, even with your spouse, a great way to connect on a deeper level is to allow your spouse to teach you something new. Maybe they have a skill that you lack in and having the humility to allow that person to teach us can really impact us on another level. <laughs> that, that's so funny. So um, we recently got the game where you stack up the, uh, the little dominoes in like the plastic sleeve and there's like a couple of colors and, and you got to try to get what four in a row. 
uh, what Connect Four, I think, is the name of the game. So we're playing that with my son and my wife, and my wife taught me how to play the game. And of course, uh, you know, the Allen family is competitive, even our four year old <laughs> son. So this is getting serious. <laughs> And uh, next thing you know, we're having fun and laughing and an hour, two hours go by. And at the end of it, we just feel like we've connected as a family. We've laughed and had a good time. They all had their chance to make fun of fun of dad around the table. Um, and, and it was a good time. And uh, so I, I, I agree with you on that. Being able to teach someone a new skill, uh, a new thought process is a way to connect and sometimes reconnect, uh, especially during these times. Because, again, if you if you and your spouse start going down this road together of of letting the negative picket fence stack up, um, it, it's a tough road. Um, and that's how how, uh, you know additional things start happening, which are not good. So uh, thank you for bringing that up. So again, we're talking spiritual, we're talking balance, and we're talking hope, um, but not false hope, but grounded hope in the thought that uh, things will work out and, and, that, and that kind of thought process. So um, Trevor, can you give our viewers any more advice as far as um, spiritual health? No, I, I think that's, I, I think that's about it. Uh, uh, introspection is very important for our own uh, spiritual health. And so um, make sure to take time to think, uh, stop and smell the roses a little bit. We have a great opportunity to do that and uh, um, have that time to reflect and uh, try something new, uh, be physically active, uh, take breaks from uh, Netflix and sitting down for too long, make sure to get up and walk often and have meaningful conversations. Every every person you meet is an opportunity to learn something do, new and um, experience a new perspective and uh, to stay mentally health. And, uh, mm -hmm. and all those uh, points, the, the mind, body, and soul, uh, inter, they're intertwined so, so, so much. So make sure to take the time to do, do those. You know, that's such great advice. And I, I like your where you came from as far as is be creative, be innovative, um, think outside the box, take that time to connect with people. And like you said, uh, the Parks Recreation Department, uh, uh, Trevor, Jack and the team, you guys doing an outstanding job of providing things for people to do uh, via the Facebook flat, platform, uh, whether it be exercise classes or, or the polls or, or the, um, uh, the nature days where people are sending in photos of how they're connecting with nature. Um, it does, it does a couple of things. It gets people out and it gets people active, but there's also this, this social connection, this engagement that happens via the website. You know, we are lucky during this time that we have this technology, um, to be able to stay connected with those folks outside of our nuclear family, uh, within just the household. So, during this time, we've been given a great gift, and that is the gift of time. Um, and how we use it is up to us individually, and how we stay positive and focused during this time. Uh, reflect back on mind, body, and spirit, like uh, Trevor Faust has coached us up on. And uh, Trevor, thanks for your time today, and uh, appreciate everybody watching Inside Cottonwood and how we inspire a vibrant community. Thank you.